Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again with Annex 13 and I'm going to install Netflix. I will warn you this tutorial may not be suitable for older machines uh, that is Antics's target market however I do run my Antics distribution on a relatively modern laptop as well as my older computers just because it's so darn fast so what we're going to do thanks to a gentleman named Eric Hoover uh, who's compiled some special uh, wine uh, version uh, specifically for watching uh, Netflix and other services that utilize uh, that don't play very well with Linux kernel um, so let's get started now I know in our uh, previous videos we made a point of trying to stay away from the command line well this is really hard to do without going to the command line and it is extremely easy if you have access to the command line so what we're going to do is we're going to use the command line I've got a tutorial written up over at annex.freeforms.org in the post I'll put a link to it in the show notes below I've got a cheat sheet here uh, that I'm going to use to copy and paste commands but it's the same sheet I used to write the tutorial and it is there um, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to open up our terminal okay that gives us our rocks term and we are going to go root by typing in su for super user and your password your root password which you set up during installation and we are going to do an app get update when this update's done, uh, we'll have uh, you know an up-to-date uh, repository. This is what we want to do. Strictly speaking, you probably don't have to do this step first, but I like to get the update updates out of the way. It doesn't take very long. Okay, and there you go. The next thing we're going to do, and actually I'm going to open up the Annex Control Center, is we're going to update our repositories and that's going to be in system and edit config files you're going to ask for your root password okay and we're going to come to these dot list now if you remember in the uh, one of the earlier videos I mentioned we'll be getting to these dot list files and what we have here are these are the repositories where you're pulling packages when you install new software the Debian dot list is your basic Debian repositories. If you remember during installation, it asked you for Wheezy testing or SID, and I stuck with Wheezy. If you stuck with me, then you're on Wheezy. It's stable, so I highly recommend it. Um, that's what these dis these repos are. The Antics repo is to the Dave server that hosts the Antics particular applications, like the Control Center and some handy scripts. Where I'm going to put my extra stuff is in various dot list and what we're going to put in there is we are going to put in two repositories a Netflix repository that actually pulls off of Ubuntu and an Ice Weasel repository from the Mozilla pro .debian.net project and we're going to just edit, copy and paste those in you can see I have comments here so that I can tell what's what this is actually a launch pad that's actually technically a Ubuntu PPA uh, it's compiled for Ubuntu but with a couple of tweaks it will work with Debian and consequently with Antics um, and then this Ice Weasel helps us solve a dependency problem that Antics has because we have a um, we have the latest and greatest Ice Weasel so you gotta you gotta set up uh, the repository to pull it in a uh, dependency that the Netflix desktop will require so we're gonna save that and now you can close that and actually I don't think we're going to need the control center anymore so I'm going to close that too and we're going to do another app get update actually I did that out of order it's going to complain about not having a um, a, a encrypted key. The the, the Netflix uh, distribution is has a encryption key. That's this key right here, and it's a very easy thing to add. Um, it's a dpackage command. There we go. Paste and a quick enter, and we're going to be good. Bob's your uncle. You've got it. Um, as soon as it goes out and adds the key, and there we go. So now we can do an app get update, and it will update properly without any errors. and there it goes okay 
Now we have one other, so we have a couple more setup steps before we install Netflix. We have to add, if you are on a 64-bit version, um, you're going to need to set up your system for multi -arch multiple architectures. In other words, you got to let it pull in some 32-bit libraries. So we are going to issue this command here, dpackage uh, add architecture i386. All you're doing is letting it pull in some 32-bit uh, libraries. Um, that aren't installed by default. This is not going to take very long. Okay, that's how quick it was. Now when we do our app get update one more time, uh, it is going to pull in a list for the i386 architecture. And if you're sharp-eyed, you'll see it in the in this these lines here in the where there's AMD64, uh, it'll there'll be both AMD64 and i386. This is going to take a second. Well, depends on the servers. It may go fast today. Look there, pretty uh, not not too bad on the speed list there. So here it comes, and now it's done. And you can see we have i386 packages um, in there. Okay. Next step is to install. Microsoft fonts. I actually usually do this as a matter of course because I have certain files that don't open, they don't look correct in LibreOffice without the fonts installed from the Microsoft. Uh, I, I, I live in both worlds, people. I'm not a Linux zealot. I do love Annex and I run on all my machines, but at work, uh, it's an engineering environment. It runs on Windows, so I got a lot of cross files. Uh, so I had to install the uh, Microsoft Core Fonts Installer. And what this is going to do is download the basic Microsoft fonts. Now you're not breaking any rules. They're they were open sourced a long time ago, uh, but getting them you have to run this command. Okay, it's going to ask you to this space say yes. You just hit enter as the default. Now this is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause the video. Let me give my system a rest while it fetches all the fonts. It's going to take two or three minutes. Okay, so uh, we're back, and you should have something looking like this. All done, no errors, all fonts downloaded and installed. Now we have to, uh, there's one more step, and I know uh, a lot of Linux sites out there do not like accepting EULAs, but there is a EULA that the Net Netflix uh, package will look for to make sure you've accepted the licensing agreement for the fonts that's going to be this line here. Let's see here, we're going to copy and paste. Okay, that's going to echo that we accepted the uh, EULA into uh, some selection criteria, into uh, some configuration files. It doesn't take very long. There we go. Okay, now we are ready to install Netflix desktop and that's going to be app get install Netflix desktop. This part is again going to take some time. Uh, so once it starts running, let it go. Uh, go get yourself a pop, go get yourself a cup of coffee, go get you a frosty beverage. Um, give it a few minutes to download all the packages. It's going to, inst it's going to bring down a lot of things. As you can see, there are 380 megabytes of additional stuff. Now, if you got a problem with disk space, maybe you want to stop right now. But honestly, modern system, I mean, my entire Annex run with Netflix installed is, is less than 6 gigs. So, let's get real. 380 megabytes is not that much room anymore. So, if you want to watch Netflix on Linux or, in, or on Annex in particular, you got to do it. Okay guys, you should have something like this after it's done installing. And you can see Wine Compolio, that's the special wine that Mr. Hoover created to um, run the Netflix, Netflix desktop. Uh, wine Browser Installer is going to pull down Firefox, the Windows version of Firefox, as well as uh, a ver uh, Silverlight for Microsoft, and that's required for 
for Netflix usage. And then the Netflix desktop is actually a very small package that contains some of uh, the scripts involved in getting everything installed. So let's go ahead and exit root user. We're going to type exit and hit enter. And then uh, we're going to run Netflix desktop. Oh, looky, there's all kinds of stuff here about mimes and character sets. And you know what? At the end of the day, uh, I got blurry eyed reading it. But what it has, says is, hey, you're missing some stuff. Would you like to download them? Yes. And it's going to ask for your root password. There it goes. We're going to download Firefox now. Again, this is the Windows version of Firefox. It won't take too awful long. After it downloads Firefox, it's we're going to down it's going to download uh, Silverlight. There goes Silverlight. Well, in a second. Oh, there it goes. Down comes Silverlight. Now it's going to set up those things. It's also going to ask. This is the Wine configuration coming up. It's going to ask for Mono, which is a uh, dot uh, net slash silver like actually I think it's dot net uh, said dot net applications uh, kind of a compatibility deal with um, for Linux uh, the, uh, an open source version of dot net if you will so we're uh, pardon my mush mouth it's a little late so it's going to download that Now in a minute, it's going to ask for um, it's going to ask if we need to install uh, Gecko uh, for Wine, and Debian has a slightly different package name from Ubuntu, so uh, we're going to cancel the installation at that point. It, it says you can do that; it's nothing strange, and we'll install it directly from the command line. Okay, could not find a Gecko package. This is what I was talking about earlier, so we're going to cancel that. And now it's going to do some final setup. And it should launch automatically. Oh, there goes the gobbledygook with all the little debugging symbols. Uh, let it let it go. It's not important for what we're uh, for what we're doing. Well, it's important to somebody, but it's not important to us. And there you go. If you looked, you momentarily saw the Netflix, uh, the uh, Windows Firefox uh, menu. Now it's going to take a second to start back up. But I've actually noticed if you're on Time Warner, uh, for instance, cable company, um, sometimes Netflix doesn't come up. I've switched my DNS servers. If you saw my YCD uh, video, I switched my DNS servers to the Google servers, and once I made that switch, I didn't have any trouble with Time Warner coming it coming back up. That that's happened no matter where I've logged in. Sometimes those DNS servers just aren't quite fast enough, and something times out. So I am going to close this now, and there we go. And we're going to go root again because we still have to install that Gecko package. And that gecko package is libwine gecko 1.4. Little cut and paste action there, and here it comes, another 30 megabytes. Hey, in for a penny, in for a pound. This is going to take a minute or so to come down. There's one more item. Um, um, that I should mention uh, the Netflix desktop uh, program, if you will, uh, will not automatically go to your iSwim menu. You'll have to set that up yourself. Okay, so Netflix, Netflix. We type Netflix desktop, and this time we'll have the full experience. Again, it's running full screen. I'm going to reduce it down and shrink the window here so that it fits on the screen a little better and I am going to uh, pause this and input the username and password okay guys there we are we're logged into Netflix and when we go to click on one of these links it's going to open up 
in the browser uh, it's going to open up the movie just like normal and there we go guys should have a TED talk coming up here in just a second and there you go Mr. Ted controls work just like they do in Windows nothing more to see here really fellas so there you go that's what you gotta do to get Netflix running on your desktop now there's one other item that is not set up it will not be on the antics menu so you need to go into your antics control center and go to your ice Wim settings and go to menu and add a Netflix prompt this is my Netflix line now you may not have an icon I put that icon into user share icons it's not there by default you could use the ice weasel icon if you want to it doesn't matter you don't even have to put it on the menu you can run it from the command line or from the run prompt okay guys that's it it's been a long video I hope you got through it uh, and I hope your Netflix install goes well for tips tricks and how-to's go to antics.mepis.org check out the, f the f FAQs and the uh, how-to articles and also for uh, put up a post and a question at antics.freeforms.org. Have a good evening.